When interpreting ethanol positive drug testing results, a question that often comes up is the role of diabetes. If a diabetic is submitting urine specimens for drug testing, is that alone enough to produce a urinary positive result? We're gonna take a look at a scenario today to help explain that for you. The first thing we need to discuss is a phenomenon known as post-collection fermentation. What this refers to is the fact that ethanol can be formed in urine samples under very specific conditions. This is the result of fermentation of sugar that's present in the urine. And that's where diabetes comes into the equation. In diabetics, in many cases, they're producing urine that's loaded with glucose. They're, they're not controlled and they're excreting glucose into their urine. There's our sugar source. But that's not the entire equation. In addition to the sugar, there must be the presence of either yeast or bacteria that's capable of fermenting that sugar. So what we're usually referring to here is a yeast infection or a bacterial urinary tract infection. If, those, if that scenario has been encountered, you have a UTI or yeast infection and you have an uncontrolled diabetic, there's the possibility that that sugar could be fermented into ethanol. Having only one of those scenarios, just simply being a diabetic, is not enough to produce a urinary positive ethanol result. You need to have either the yeast or the bacteria present. Now that phenomena will be accelerated if samples are maintained at room temperature. But again, you need to have the yeast, bacteria, and the sugar to produce the ethanol. In addition to production of ethanol, if E. coli is the bacteria that's present, E. coli is capable of taking our ethanol and converting it to ethyl glucuronide, a metabolite of ethanol. Now this is specific to E. coli, and what's also important to note is that ethyl sulfate, the other metabolite, will never ever be produced in a urine sample. So the presence of ethyl sulfate will absolutely rule out the possibility of post-collection fermentation. If you see ethyl sulfate on a drug test, the only possible source is metabolism in the human liver. So let's take a look at two final reports and compare those two scenarios. The first, we have an ethyl glucuronide screen we have high concentrations of ethyl glucuronide, and we have high concentrations of ethyl sulfate. This is a scenario where an individual consumed an alcoholic beverage. The presence of ethyl sulfate completely rules out the possibility of post-collection fermentation from a diabetic. In another scenario, we have a positive ETG screen. We have ethyl glucuronide detected. Ethyl sulfate is negative. This is an unusual scenario, and we flag it on our FAUNA reports positive ETG result, no reportable ETS, may be caused by post-collection formation of ETG and may not be consistent with consumption of alcohol. So be looking out for that flag in your FAUNA report. If you see that flag, it's a possibility that you've got a diabetic that had a, a UTI or, or a yeast infection and they fermented that ethanol. If, however, you see the presence of ethyl sulfate, you can just ignore that possibility the individual consumed an alcoholic beverage.